Hello there folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome to part 28 of our MotoGP 19 career mode. Today it's time to effectively start what is the second half of the MotoGP season. So we start today's uh, episode at Spielberg, the Red Bull Ring, the My World Motorrad Grand Prix van Osterich. Yeah, that's probably my best Austrian accent, even though I don't really know what an Austrian accent would be. Anyway, then we go to more familiar lands, something I can cope with a little bit more. The GoPro British Grand Prix, that's a little bit better. At the Silverstone Circuit, of course, our home race, Cal Crutchlow's home race as well. Then we have a negotiation period, to be quite honest, unless we get offered a factory ride. I don't think I'll move, and I don't really see the point of moving at this point. And then finally, we go to the Mazzano Circuit for the San Marino GP in the 13th Grand Prix. Just a reminder of what happened, of course, last time out. We had quite a dramatic episode. We had the Dutch Grand Prix in by we uh, finished in 14th place. Quite a decent Grand Prix. Uh, I think that was, yeah, it was our first points course for the uh, LCR Honda team after having a disaster in Catalonia. Then we went to Saxon Ring, in which truly we really didn't have any pace, but we had a monstrous start and just really held the damage limitation card and managed to finish in 10th. That was a great Grand Prix. Then we had the Czech Grand Prix. It was monsoon conditions all weekend, pretty much. And that's why you had performances such as 4th from Quattararo, 7th from Morbidelli, 9th from Javi Shireen, and 10th uh, from Paolo Squagro. It was a really mixed bag, and to get two points out of that, I think, was a real achievement. So let's hope we can have a similar run today of, score, uh, of point scoring, and let's hope that can start at Austria. Very nice new feature. There was a little update before we started. That is a great feature. So along with the usual bits you can have a look at in this session, you can also have a look at the combined results. So... We don't have to kind of hang on till the end of the session to worry whether we've got through or not. That's an awesome feature. Kudos to Milestone for that. Now, before we go any further, I suppose I ought to just say a few things. I didn't say anything in the introduction, so you can watch a bit of me going around the Austria circuit, racing and yapping. Not probably the best thing to do, but that's what you do in a live commentary, so I suppose that's what we've got to do. But the reason it wasn't a video on Thursday, I know a few people asked about it in the comments, so I'm sh I guess that shows that you guys care, which is really nice. I had an interview on Thursday for uh, an apprenticeship, so I do tend to record these usually on the day of the release. Uh, that's very that's a really tricky corner. I don't like this corner, and the next corner coming up, actually, on a bike, it's tricky to get slowed down for. So that was the reason it wasn't a video on Thursday. I just didn't have the time of me being uh, bogged down with the interview all day. Just show you this corner. It's a nasty one. I've braked really early, but if you missed your braking point, just like, I mean, as you've just seen there, it's not exactly easy. To get into that corner even if you break quite early so it's a challenging track is this but hopefully we can extract uh, the maximum out of the bike when we've done a few uh, practice laps there are a lot of problems with this bike round here our, i mean our pace is nowhere near what it should be i mean i won 23.8 from uh, dovey as you can see we are way down uh, the field but the bike's just not right at all we can't get the acceleration can't get it on the brake so a lot of this session and luckily we've got quite a while to do it uh, well, I'm going to have a big chat to the engineers and see if we can sort the bike out, because there's multiple issues there. Ultimately, it seems, at least so far, we just haven't got the pace here. I mean, that top 10, the boundary is 25-1. 26.4 was our fastest time, so we're a long way off that, but I just hope we have a light, a light bulb moment, really, in that uh, Q1 session, because I don't know where we're losing pace. I know there's a few corners I don't like here, but we were certainly never this slow on a Moto2 bike or a Moto3 bike. So I guess it's just experimenting with different lines and hoping that something, some new approach, will gain us at least a second in Q1. Well, our Q1 future looks pretty bleak. It's similar to what it was in the last session, to be quite honest. No idea why we haven't got the pace this weekend. It's a real bizarre one. We just can't seem to be as quick as any of the other riders, to be quite honest. We're about four temps down in the first sector. And, of course, if that's, what, a 20-second sector, then... <laughs> Effectively, you're already on a bad point for the rest of the lap. I don't particularly know why that is. Uh, at least we've got one more lap to try and do something. But as it stands, it's back of the back of the grid in terms of the back row. I don't really see that changing too much. Hello and welcome to the Red Bull Ring. Just a few minutes to go, and the MotoGP class Austrian Grand Prix will finally begin. As you can tell from the footage, we're broadcasting from the track. We're looking forward to great weather for the race. Well, let's hope that. We take a little bit of inspiration from the German Grand Prix in that we've started effectively where we started there. I think it was the back row, wasn't it? It was uh, 21st place out of the 23 riders. And let's hope we do well because Cal Crutchlow is showing us to be a bit of a mug, especially in qualifying at the moment. It's not looking great. We've got Dovi Marquez and Rossi on the front row. That's something that's been familiar 
throughout the season. Miller again out qualifying Petrucci on that uh, Pramac bike. And as you can see, our teammate Cal in seventh place. Not really good enough for us, to be honest, to be all the way back here. Uh, we've got Johan Mia, Zarco, and Oliveira. Good result, to be fair, for the KTM rider uh, on the Tech 3, of course, in 15th place. And then we've got Shireen, Bagnaya, Abraham, ourselves. We're actually further back than I thought we would have been, actually. Uh, and interestingly, Paulus Bargro rounding out the grid. I wouldn't have said that he'd be that far back. He's usually a strong figure on that KTM bike. But once again, a little bit like Germany and a little bit like a few other races this year, we can't go back. So, in effect, we just have to look forward and see what we can do. So it, we're not going to be battling with these at the front. It's quite clear today. We should be able to be scrappy for some points potentially. But as I always say in every race, the main aim of the start is to stop on the bike. Lights are on. And we're away for the Grand Prix of Austria. Not a brilliant start from us to be quite honest. But equally not a terrible one either. Bagnaya has had quite a poor getaway. So we could take advantage of that coming into the first corner. Everyone's so close that first corner but we've gained one or two positions off that initial start which is quite good but we always have a bit of a wheelie on that uh, on that straight which means we do lose a little bit of pace to everybody else but we're not all that far off we could uh, potentially take one or two positions from those who aren't particularly brave here but blimey the KTM behind us was certainly brave has nearly been knocked off his bike by I think that's Maverick Vinales who's actually dropped back quite a uh, way from the start and yes it is Maverick Vinales but as you can see I think that one of the problems is we're just not getting off the corners. Our traction off the corners is quite poor. But uh, Morbidelli, that's a shock to see him drop down. He's had quite a poor start. I'm fairly sure he started on the top 10. But uh, this isn't too bad a corner for us to get out of. As you can see, if we accelerate out, we can beat people out the corners. So it's going to be a scrappy one. I think we've not got too deep. Uh, we've not got too bad pace. As you know, well, personally, I think my wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat racing isn't all that bad. Got past Nakagami there and the KTM Tech 3. Rabat, our feverish teammate, fighting devilishly with uh, that Aprilia up ahead and we just got great pace it's all about just trying different lines and uh, really just making sure that we make the positions a little bit like the German Grand Prix in the race wise in terms of lap by lap we haven't really got the pace but if we can make positions here and there by braking later etc etc then we're on to a winner but Jack Miller on that uh, Pramac Ducati well, he was, I suppose, the second Ducati in the race at the start. So it doesn't really make much difference. But the fact that he's second is very impressive. Ian Ono fights me, Jorge Lorenzo. So not a bad start from us at all, really. As I said, we've gained places. And if we get past Lorenzo, we're going to make sure we relegate him to be the... Uh, no, he's not going to be the bottom Honda, actually. Scrap that, because we have got, uh, I think, Nakagami's behind us now. I'm fairly sure we overtook him earlier. But uh, let's see how we get on for the rest of the race. We haven't had a bad start at all. I don't think we can complain too much about that. I seem to remember in the lower categories, actually, that we uh, had a fairly poor first half of the lap at uh, Austria and then gained the positions at the end of the lap. So that's obviously a pattern that's carried on here. We got past Ian Ona, as you might have seen at the start of that clip. Marquez down in seventh. That's not usually a place he is. But we've got a good run on Lorenzo on this corner. We could actually be into a point paying position, which would have told me that after two. But me after two laps, I'd have been fairly shot. We tap the back at Lorenzo, just break a little bit later into the corner, which means we go massively wide and unfortunately have to cede any sort of battle with him for the moment. But let's hope here Nona doesn't get past. But 16th place, it's always the worst place to finish, as with any uh, sport, just outside the points or just outside the medals or whatever uh, comparison you like to use. So it's gutting to finish here. So let's hope we can... Oh, no! Well... Scrap that then. Just when we get into a good position, we push just a little bit too hard. Ah, I mean, we haven't got the most race pace, so we tried to gain the positions. We did, but as is always the case with MotoGP, one mistake and effectively your fighting chances are over. That's really disappointing. So nearly final lap time, but all is not lost. We've caught up to the pack actually in the last few laps through some consistent laps, so we might be able to get past Abraham, so we won't be the complete rear of the field, which is nice to see. We'll try and pick up a, pick up one or two places on the last lap if we can. I mean, if you fall off the bike and don't finish last, obviously, the big, if nobody else does, of course, if you fall off the bike and somebody else does, that point is a little bit invalid, but if we can uh, not finish at the rear of the field and gain one or two positions here, that isn't too bad, but ultimately, the critic would say, the devil's advocate here would say, well, you're on a factory Honda, effectively, so surely you'd you'd uh, well, not want to finish at the back despite having a crash and 
that's absolutely right. In some races like here, we're just not where we're supposed to be. But ultimately, I might just be being a little bit uh, dramatic and exaggerating. Bear in mind that it is our debut MotoGP season. And it's only our 11th MotoGP race. We've had plenty of experience now, of course, in the lower categories. And we've been around the tracks plenty of times. But I think... Oh, go on, calm down, Abraham. But I think until you... I mean, we're going to go way wide into here. Just because of Abraham putting us off. So that's our, effectively, uh, any chance of finish any higher than last. Gone, and that's a little bit annoying. But, uh, yeah. I'd, uh, look, look, it's our first year of MotoGP. And ultimately, there are bound to be races where we aren't as good as what we should be. And that's just something we've got to face throughout the season. And there will be some races where we have real highlights. And we've only been on this bike a few races. And we definitely have had those highlights as well as some lows like here. Probably our worst race so far, to be quite honest. Neither having the pace in qualifying or the race. I mean, we picked up a few positions, yes, at the start. But ultimately, not really good enough. It is... Uh, Doveri wins the race. That's going to be disappointing for Petrucci, particularly considering that he is outside of the top 10. But uh, I wouldn't really be celebrating that too much, to be honest, pal. But uh, Dovey wins the race. Rins second and Jack Miller in third. So in terms of a team display, it has to be uh, the Suzuki team that's had the best weekend. Elijah Spargo in seventh. A really nasty result, really, for Marquez in ninth. Not what you'd expect. Uh, actually, uh, well, not the leading uh, Spaniard. There's two Spaniards. In fact, three Spaniards in front of him. That's not usually something you say. Uh, about uh, Mark Marquez. But as you can see, we are way at the back there. Although, to be fair, our times weren't all that bad. So in terms of the championship then, Marquez is still ahead. That shows how much of a gap he had for him to uh, be allowed to finish in ninth place and Dovi at the top and still have that 20-point gap. Uh, Cal Crutchlow is outperforming us massively, 95 points, and we are on 21 points. So we fall behind Bagnaia again. But where are we going next? It's our home race, and I think that will give us just a little bit more optimism. We're not having this our own way, you know, today. It's wet at Silverstone for FP3. If it was wet again, I said the same in Bruno. If it was wet in FP1 and 2, we will have a chance of setting a time good enough, potentially, to get through to the next session. But let's have a look if it was uh, dry in FP1 and 2. Because if it was dry in FP1 and 2, to be quite honest, I don't really see the point of running. But let's have a quick look. So, weekend management... It was wet, so it was actually pretty much monsoon conditions. So we have got a chance. That's all good. So let's see what we can do. And hopefully we can get into the top 10 and Q2 in this our home race. Oh, God, look at this with three minutes to go. We were actually top of the times. Now it's going to be so interesting. Oh, let's, just, let's just get out there. Let's shut up. Let's just get out there because the track seems to be drying massively. We set the fastest time of a 2.04.5, and that was three minutes ago. Luckily, I mean, it's not very realistic. I don't know what Lorenzo's doing. It's not very realistic, granted, but you can get out there straight away. If we'd have been on proper time, we'd have been really rushing to get a lap done here. But we set a 2.04.5. That has been beaten in a matter of minutes by two and a half seconds. So the track is drying by the minute, and it's a case of who sets the fastest lap here. Bear in mind, this is the dry, dry session all weekend, and we could have a really, really, really mixed Q2, and I'm loving that. Well, that wasn't really a great lap, was it? A 204.3. That being said, it's enough for 15th, but we need 10th to get into Q2. We've really got to go for it this lap. Really got to rag the bike. And if we fall off, we fall off. But I think it's worth the risk here just to get to that elusive Q2 session. Oh, my God. That is painful. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to have to go back in the footage, future me, but oh no. Oh, that's painful. I just slightly cut one corner. And because it was said in an invalid lap, that's it. Oh, no way. Oh. Well, it's a pretty usual lineup, to be fair, in Q2. I mean, Javi Shiring getting in there is a massive shock. If there's one thing we can take, though, I guess, it's that we've actually got the pace if it's wet in Q1. But that is so frustrating, the fact that we couldn't improve our time just because we got one corner slightly wrong and just got the wrong side of the kerb. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, Q1 is such like FP3. It's just playing with me. It's horrible. Hopefully we get the right side of this this time. 
but uh, we just set the fastest lap for 205.5. The previous was a 2.10. And now everyone's setting quicker laps. I mean, we've got the hindsight of coming past the line quicker than everybody, yes, uh, in terms of, well, actually, no, because the likes of Zarco, Quattararo, etc., We'll get another lap. We won't. Oh, are we going to fall the wrong side of the coin once again? Let's have a look what this lap is, I suppose. I doubt he's going to be enough for Q2. Just got to rag it round the corner. Don't care if we go wide. Oh, 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 it's not enough. Oh, this is heartbreaking. I honestly think we've had the pace all weekend, but we just keep getting caught out. Oh! But oh well, we start uh, on an all Honda row, on the fifth row, with Lorenzo and Taka. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how we get on in the Grand Prix. And Morbidelli's been given the real raw deal. Look at that! Couldn't improve his time from a 2.10, so he starts all the way at the back. Oh, gutting for him. Hello, everyone. We're joining you live from Silverstone. Everything here is ready for the start of a thrilling new MotoGP. At the moment, the track is completely soaked from the rain that shows no signs of letting up. This will definitely prompt race direction to declare a wet race. Well, I see a familiarity with some race that happened at Silverstone, or didn't happen at Silverstone, but today, thank goodness, the race is on. But it's the wettest it's been all weekend. I wonder who will make the gains here. I think it's going to be a great Grand Prix, to be fair. I, I am really quick around Silverstone, I love it. And it's Dovi on pole on those soft front and soft rear. I feel like I might go for a medium. Oh, sorry, no, it's us on the soft and soft Never mind, uh, that's just the same what we're on. But Rins is second, and is it just going to pan back to someone random now? Yeah, it does. Elisha Sparker all the way down in 18th. So we are going to go just out of a bit of a hunch. I'm going to go with uh, medium. No, actually, no, we'll go with a soft front and a medium rear just to get that little bit of stability um, on the back tyre. But there's us as well being interviewed on the grid. Nice to see us getting a bit of a mention down there in P15. But it's going to be a very, very, very intriguing race. A lot of people going with soft, soft. I mean, we we followed the strategy of our teammate and Marquez, which is usually a good pattern to go with. We got Petrucci in seventh, a great quality from Quattarara, and particularly from the two KTM boys. I know that Shireen's on the Tech Free buy, but regardless, good qualifying from them. As you can see, both are all of the uh, three Hondas on that one row, and a Spargo, uh, Bagnaia, and Elijah Spargo a little bit further back than he'd want to be. With uh, Ian One and Morbidelli, a disappointing day for him, a particularly disappointing day. But he's absolutely tipping it down. Who's got the biggest guts? Who's got the biggest balls at the end of the day? This is going to be an interesting race. And if we couldn't stay on in Austria, it's going to be a tricky one here. Oh my goodness me. This is exactly what it was like last year. At the real race, but except it never happened. Right then, we're on the grid. Lights are on, we're going to have to be so careful on this start. And the lights are out, and away we go. And here, five lap race round here, but as you can see, it's just so horrible and no grip whatsoever. So we have dropped a few places, but a few people just completely going massively wide there, completely uh, under assuming the conditions there. But good acceleration out of that corner. In fact, we've trumped a few people there, but Morbidelli starting at the back has already made quite a bit of progress. And oh my goodness me, this is painful. Don't keep on the bike, keep on the bike. We've had a crap start, basically. An absolutely awful uh, getaway, which is a real shame here in Silverstone. But, uh, again, the only way is up. I know that's a song that Yaz sung, and I've made reference to that a few times before. But, anyway, we've got to go up from here. This isn't the best start whatsoever. A painful one. Just got uh, outdone into that maggot Maggots and Beckett's complex. Not really taking as much uh, bravery and as much speed into there, ultimately, as anybody else. And it seems we are... Going to have to take a bit of time to adjust to these conditions. I really thought this could be a race that we'd do well at, but it seems at the moment it's not going to be. But that being said, there's plenty of time. Just got to get into the rhythm. Luckily, um, we're not going to be knocked off by anybody else's line, but that's not a great line there. We're really struggling here. We, I mean, we're, pfft, you know, we're, Jesus. Just no traction, no grip whatsoever. Got to go so wide there, it's painful. And it seems everybody else has got the better of the conditions. It's horrible this has been at the back. It's not nice. We need to get out of this rut a little bit, but... I suppose if we get a little bit more consistency over the laps, I think we've got the pace to certainly challenge for the points. And it's not like everybody else is that far away. So as long as we can get some consistency, we should be absolutely fine. We've caught back up to the pack now. We've dispatched Carol Abraham. Let's see what we can do coming into these two corners. Jesus Christ, Abraham enters there quickly. Like everyone, just varying lines. It's different speeds at different times. And every rider's got their own style, really. But, I mean, we've got past Abraham, but we've lost the pace again. It's... Just so disheartening. I think we've been completely... 
mugs this weekend, to be honest. Completely outdone by the conditions, etc. I know you could say, well, you can adjust to the conditions, but honestly, I think we've just been mugged. I mean, in qualifying, we could have been so far further up. I mean, clearly, that didn't help us even qualifying in 15th because we're still back here. But the conditions today are just absolutely vile. Final lap time and sadly no improvement on our position. These conditions are just absolutely horrible. I mean, we got past Abraham. That's one position. Great. But a few more races like this, we could be booted from the LCR team, particularly the performance of Crutchlow. Seems Rins has overtook Dovi and Dovi's got back past him late. Oh, that's another position protected gained on Paula Spargo who's fell off just before the end of the race. So, great. 21st place. That's a, such a difference. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's not been a good episode so far. That means we've got a lot of pressure on us going into Mizano. And of course, it is the contractual uh, offer thing after this. So I don't think that uh, we're going to get any factory rides somehow. Jesus Christ, this bar ground nearly takes out, why don't you? I mean, I think that shows that everybody else is just so much better in the wet than us, particularly around here. But Andrea Dovizioso wins for the second time in a row. He's actually clawed back a massive gap to... Marquez in the championship this episode because Marquez again finished 9th or 10th so interesting we'll have a quick look at that afterwards but what a disastrous race particularly gutted on home ground I'd have liked to have done a lot better but that's the way it goes Quattrara great result for him again in 4th our, our teammate in 5th that's a bitter pill to swallow and uh, yeah not a great race from us whatsoever and only 2 points to the gap now that must have been about 40 at the start of the episode so a disaster for Mark Marquez so far, and uh, we are still on 21 points, so not particularly great. And let's hope Mazzano, I mean, we, you know, we need one. We need at least one good race this episode, and let's hope Mazzano is the one that provides that. Does anyone remember a thing called dry weather? You wouldn't have thought it was existed after that Silverstone weekend, but we did get offers from Pramac once again. We got one from the uh, sister Honda team, which doesn't really make much sense to me. Uh, we got one from KTM and from Real Avincia, but at the end of the day, I thought the best thing would be to do is to stay put. It's unbelievable how responsive and uh, quick the bike feels now that we're out of that wet situation. But yeah, I think this is the best place for us to be at the moment. Uh, Pramac could have been an opportunity, but at the moment, I think that we're best on this bike. And I think that is, I think I'm right in saying that's the last negotiation period before now and the end of the season. So unless we get kicked out and booted, uh, this will be our bike till the end of the season. Oh, this is starting to get frustrating now. We are so close to Q2. And it's when your teammates easily getting in there that makes it even worse. But once again, I'm going to have to go through Q1. And that's actually something we haven't done so far. And I think I think we could do it here. But again, it's tight. It is really tight. Bank lap time then in Q1. And I say we're definitely going to be competitive here. But based on what's happened this episode, we might well just miss out. But this is a good bank of time. We've still got time for at least three more laps, to be honest, if uh, if we can't quite get to the time. But let's have a look what our banker is. It shouldn't be too bad. It's a, what, ooh, a little bit lost in that last sector. That's not really good enough. We're about three and a half temps down coming into that last sector. So we've effectively doubled the gap, which is a little bit confusing just in that last sector. But nevertheless... Seven temps off. I guess in three laps we can try and nick pick where it's going wrong and try and get to that sort of time. But bear in mind, we don't actually have to beat Johan Mir. This is going to be a poor lap already because we've made a mistake there. Now, we don't have to beat Johan Mir as long as we're in the first two. It doesn't matter, but this is going to be a write-off already, which is really disappointing. Well, Johan Mir has just set the bar massively high. Bear in mind, his previous time was a 34 dead. 33 points on. I mean, we couldn't get within a second, really, of that time, so... To get anywhere near that 33-2 is going to be really tough. I think he's just improved that again. I swear it was a 271 before. That must be a 268. I might be wrong. I might just be seeing things. But, ooh, that's a good sector. We could have a chance here. I don't think we have. But we might as well stay on board for the rest of the lap. As I've, as I've said previously, we don't have to beat we don't have to beat uh, Yuan Mia. We just have to beat whoever's in second, which, unfortunately, we don't know who that is. But if we aim for the top time and beat that top time, then it means we do get into the next session. We've had such a crap episode, just getting this one thing and make it all a little bit sweeter. But no, that uh, third sector is way off. That's harrowing, that third sector. That's unbelievable how much we've lost there. <sighs> this has been a disastrous episode. Can't put my finger on what's happened, but after a string of really consistent points finishes, we're scrapping to get out of Q1s at this point, and it's just not good enough. Greetings from the Marco Simoncelli World Circuit in Mizano, where the MotoGP race is about to begin. 
As you can tell from the footage, we're broadcasting from the track. We're looking forward to great weather for the race. Well, at least it's dry and that gives us a chance, but goodness me. I don't want to get all negative, but this has been a disastrous episode. A little bit of luck, a lot of our riding being the problem. I can't put it all down to luck, ultimately. Uh, but Alex Rins is on pole for this Grand Prix. That's an interesting one. He's not one I usually gets on pole. I'd love to be near that front mark. But bear in mind, again, it is just our first season. I think we need to be reminded of that. Maybe we have moved up a little bit quickly and should have stayed out on the Vincia bike. But Nakakam is in ninth. That's really disheartening for us being all the way back there. But Crutchlow in seventh. Jack Miller once again, as usual, out qualifying uh, Danilo Petrucci. And uh, we've actually been beaten, I think. I didn't realise we were this far down. Jesus Christ, we're in 19th place. I didn't think we were that far down. But we've got a clear gap to the guys behind so I think we should be clear of those but let's see if we can score some points the only points of today's episode lights are out and away we go for this uh, Italian Grand Prix at the San Marino circuit but uh, it's a seven lap race so fairly long we've dropped to the back at the start as is usual but we're trying to get a bit of a different line through here and just get through the traffic which we've done successfully and it's just time to be aggressive to be honest which we absolutely have done a little bit like the Saxon ring don't want to fall off the bike quite just yet that could be a disaster but uh, if we get past this uh, tech free Yamaha I mean blimey a few people have whacked into that corner there but regardless of where we end up this first lap as long as we don't lose too many positions now we've had an awesome start that's well into the points Abraham also a great start for him up in 11th and it's 12th for us Quattararo just ahead in 10th We've got to get our uh, elbows out a little bit here, but not too much ultimately that we fall off the bike. And that's actually the first time that we've seen our teammate for a hell of a long time. Carl Crutchlow, what a great start we've had here. Let's see if we can pack compound that, but we'll stay on board for the rest of this first lap. That's a little bit wide there, just control the speed. But we get out of that corner absolutely fine. And that is great acceleration. And we can just squeeze past Quattararo there. And we're into the top 10. That is quite believable. We're in front of a factory Ducati. There is Nakagami. We'll go past him. Where this sudden burst of pace has come from, I've got absolutely no idea. But we're taking it uh, as as a great reward. But, uh, oh, got the inside of Quattararo. He's just jumped up the inside of us. So, uh, oh, we've got a bit of a penalty for that as well. Just being a little bit too aggressive there. Need to curb that. Because that's exactly what we did at Mazzano last year in Moto2. And uh, I thought, honestly, at that point that we'd lost the championship. We don't want to do that again. But 10th place, we've got a bit of a penalty. That shouldn't really be too bad. Uh, we should finish at least 10th. As you can see, there's quite a gap to the guys behind. But finally, this episode, we've got our name on that uh, top left uh, ranking screen in the top 10. Let's see if we can stay here. That'd be a great end to the episode that's been quite a mundane one. Bit of a mid-race update for you folks then. Well, as you can see, we're staying in touch with Fabio Quattara. Admittedly, we probably gained about half a second this lap. So it's been quite a good lap from ourselves. But as is always the case, and uh, if you're on it, well, not always the case, but it definitely can be sometimes the case, and usually is for us this season, is that we are, you know, staying on pace, as you can see, with Quattararo, Mir, and the guys ahead in that little train. But ultimately, we haven't got the edge. We haven't got the edge to be able to get close enough and pass them at the moment. But that being said, there's still three laps left, and if we continue in the same fashion that we did last lap with our uh, lap time, we could be quite decently placed. I mean, we have got that... Little penalty hung round our uh, head a little bit. Hung round our neck rather, not our head. And, well, I suppose, well, whatever. Dear me, I'm making a lot of muck-ups there. But <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got that hung round our neck a little bit. But uh, we've still got time. Or we might as well go for it in the end of the day. What did Ayrton Senna say if uh, you no longer go for a gap? You're no longer a racing driver, ultimately. And that is Crutchlow dropping to 8th place. We'll watch this little bit because we can be quite quick around these uh, section of corners. And it seems that... For everybody's scrap, we have gained. In fact, we're the closest to Quattararo than we have been probably since lap one. So that's what we can do through this section of corners. If you take this exactly right, you can get such a good slipstream, but not quite this lap. But we've definitely gained visibly over the last few laps on this pack of uh, bikes. So hopefully we can stay in touch. It'd be great to gain a few more positions, but it looks like uh, we are going to finish in 10th, which is a massive boost to our confidence, particularly after the last few races. We might as well follow the action from here to the end because ultimately we haven't had such an exciting episode in terms of race, uh, in terms of race by race craft and uh, racing with each rider. So uh, hopefully here we'll have a little bit of wheel to wheel action on the last lap. But again, it's just we're we're really close, but we haven't got that edge. And certainly with a four tenth gap, it's not like you can bomb one down the inside. Ultimately, particularly with our 
riding style favouring brake early accelerate and getting that uh, gap shortened on the acceleration rather than the brake. It's uh, just different riding styles ultimately. I don't feel confidence whacking the brakes on, but I do like uh, getting that little bit of an undercut out of corners, which works at some corners, doesn't work at others. And again, that's the same with the other tactic. There's, there, uh, there's ups and downs to both tactic, but I don't think we're going to gain any places. But again, we like to reach for the stars, but ultimately we've done very well here just to stay in 10th. In fact, that's a good corner from us. If long as we stay on the bike, keep it calm, keep it grounded. We are very close to Fabio Quattararo, and let's just make sure it can't be just one or two corners that we're that close to him. We've got to make sure it's a whole lap effort. But bear in mind that Danny Petrucci on the factory Ducati, by the way, uh, is behind us. So he might well catch us up and he might be demoted to 11th at the same time. We could well get past Quattararo. Not the ideal exit out there. Just a little bit late braking. Uh, which means that Fabio and the rest of the group do gain a little bit on us. But into this corner, we can get quite a nice exit out of this corner. Again, it's all about getting that perfect entry and exit. Quattararo battling with Cal Crutchlow. That could be who we're battling with at the end of the lap. Potentially all getting very sideways there. But Cal and Fabio side by side going into this corner. I think that Cal's going to keep it. But I think we probably fell a little bit too far back to try anything on Quattararo or Cal. Uh, in the next few corners, but you never know. We're going to try just to keep it grounded. Whoa, oh, calm down, stay on the bike. No, oh, there's Danny Petrucci. Come on, we don't want to fall off. That's the last thing we want to do, but we want to get past Petrucci. Oh, that might be a bit more of a penalty. Actually, no, we got away with that. So into the last corner, I think it might still be 11th because it's going to be tough to pull a 4 tenth gap just out the last corner. Oh, it's 6 tenths now, being too greedy, but just staying right to the right hand side. And it's definitely going to be points of some description. Have we kept 10th or has Petrucci got that place? We've got a tick on the top 10, which means that we have... Oh, look at that. Just about finished there. And if you look at our lap times, actually, our lap times were the fastest of that group. So we really had some pace and that's definitely a brilliant race. I'm a lot happier after that. And a massive, well, a massive episode for Dovius recoup such a gap um, to go past Marquez at the top of the championship and we score six points for the team so a poor episode really it has to be said in general but it's bittersweet isn't it because we had two dreadful races but then here we got some points I think we deserved those we battled well we weren't really that quick in terms of consistency to get past the pack ahead if we'd have set laps that we did uh, I think it was a 133 two something like that if we'd have set that every lap we'd have finished fourth but End of the day, let's just take 10th place and roll with it. It certainly uh, plays the team a bit more. And ultimately, that was a very happy one. God, it seemed like a long episode. That took two hours and three minutes. So just to put that into context, it should be about a half an hour video, hopefully, uh, in the end of it. But at the end of this episode, we finish off with six points. So we have the penultimate episode of the season on Tuesday before going to the fight finale of the season on Thursday. So we have Aragon, Thailand and Japan. And then, unbelievably, it seems to have come round so quick. We have the Phillip Island, Malaysian and Valencia Grand Prix all coming up in the next week. But thank you very much for your company today, folks. I hope you have enjoyed. I've been TIJ Gamer. And until the next time, I will see you later. Goodbye for now.